Hey guys, what's up? Thanks so much for stopping by, or if this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Dana. I'm so happy to have you. It has been a week, not just for me, but for everyone. And I think with it came a lot of listening and learning and I'm really hopeful and excited just for change. Now, before I get into this video, it just felt weird to just instantly talk about makeup. I know I've been having great conversations with you guys over in my DMs on Instagram stories. Things got emotional, but it's been really great hearing from all of you guys. But one thing that I wanted to say that kind of bothered me is there, I think with any sort of situation, there's always people that are almost looking to create more division. And I, with all of the DMs that were great, I did get several that were just things like, oh, you know, I thought you're friends with this person. I noticed she hasn't posted anything yet or this person or this person. That's their business. I can't control what speed people are comfortable expressing their words and emotions with. And you don't really have control over that either. I think with this, another very important thing to have is grace, to show people grace. And just because they haven't said anything yet doesn't mean they feel this way or that way. Not only are we going through this amazing Black Lives Matter movement, but we've also been going through a pandemic. And I think that's taken a lot of just emotional wear and tear on people. So whether it's finances or family issues, there's different things that people are going through. So just because they're not posting things at your pace, I th still think it's really important just to not be so harsh. I know we had talked about this over on IG stories already, but just to go over it again, more than anything, I hope that whenever you guys come to my platform, you do feel welcome and you do feel loved because kind people are my kind of people. I don't care what background you come from. You guys are important to me and I definitely respect you. So the only type of people we don't have room for here are hateful, rude, judgmental, racist people. We ain't got no room for you here, so go ahead, let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. I know God doesn't like ugly, but maybe that little slap to the rear end will knock some sense back into you. But let's go ahead and get into my favorites now. To be honest, I don't have too many makeup favorites just because I didn't wear too much makeup in the month of May. We went home for about two, two and a half weeks to Florida to see my parents and Keegan's parents. It was absolutely amazing, but I wore makeup maybe two out of the like 14 days that we were there. But these are some products that I was using here in there and before we left. So first up, this is a product you would have seen featured in a video that I did. It may have been my last video um, where I just unboxed some new makeup products. This is one of the new NARS bronzers. So they released some new matte bronzers. This one is in the shade Samoa. I just love this bronzer. It definitely is more on the kind of like orangey warm side in comparison to NARS Laguna. I do have a teeny tiny bit of this on today. I'm sure some of y'all are looking at me right now thinking like, wow, you look really greasy and oily, but this is a look that I have been loving lately. The formula is very similar. It just melts right into the skin. Very easy to blend out. I don't have too much of it on. We went to the beach and I did get a little bit sunburn. I thought I was pretty good with my SPF, but my forehead got pretty dark as well as the top of my feet. That is one spot that I've never really been burnt before. Let me tell you, it was no bueno. But I just have a teeny tiny bit of this on today and I've just really been loving this shade. I did actually save a few shades off to the side that I do wanna use in a upcoming giveaway, whether it's gonna be, I always feel like it's easier for me to do giveaways over on Instagram, just because sometimes contacting the winner on YouTube can just be really hard and like filtering through the comments, but Keep your eyes peeled for that one. Okay, another product from that NARS collection is one of their, I always forget the name of these, Power Chrome Loose Eye Pigments. I did a tutorial several weeks back using a red shade. This was a color where in the pan, I looked at it and I was like, oh yeah, it's cute, but I typically don't go for like really pearly, icy shades like this. This one is called Castaway. It definitely just looks like a like polar white, but it just has this really nice duochrome shift to it. So whenever you blend it out, you get a little bit of this like golden pinky sheen. Isn't that so beautiful? It's just your ideal topper shadow or if you just even wanna apply it onto a naked eyelid, just with a color shift and dimension in there, you get so much just sparkle, I love it. That's a shade that I have on my inner corners today, but I just took the tiniest, tiniest bit. You definitely can go in and really pack these up if you want. Another thing that I love about these though is I don't even have to go in with any sort of glitter glue. They just do a great job of sticking right onto the eye. I will say though, if you are, are Sephora's even open? like in store, I'm not quite sure. But I know when I received these in PR, there was one that came a little bit loose. As long as you go in and really just kind of like pack it back in, you don't have any issues. It's not a cream, but it's not like a super loose pigment either. It's just this kind of pressed, slightly squishy 
packed pigment powder, I guess that's the best way to describe it. I'm not quite sure, but that's just one of the shades out of the many that I've been loving. There was an amazing turquoise that came in the collection that I really want to film a tutorial with. So definitely stay tuned for that. One other product that was in that video is one of the Grande Pop Plumping Liquid Blushes. I have the shade Cinnamon Sugar. It is the blush that I'm wearing today. I love these. i am just been so into liquid and cream cheek products lately though, but I find when it comes to blushes, liquid and cream blushes definitely last on my face the longest. I always notice with powder blushes, that's always the first thing to go on my face. So if I can find like a really good liquid or cream, I typically stick to those. Another formula that I really like are the flower, Aren't those like blush blush bombs, flower bombs, blush bombs, I think, something like that. I've talked about those a ton. And then of course the NARS liquid blushes, those are amazing. There's another one I really like. I can't think of it right now. Those are some of my top two. If you like those two, I really do think you would like this one as well. The only thing is this one, since it's supposed to be a plumping liquid blush, if you go in with quite a bit of the product, you'll get this like cooling, slightly tingling sensation. That's like, I think the main thing that makes people either love it or hate it. If it didn't have that, I think pretty much most people would love it just because it is so long wearing. It has great pigmentation. But I notice I go in with such a sheer amount because I find them to be pretty pigmented that I really don't get that intense cooling sensation. I didn't notice it the first several times that I wore it. And then finally, one of like the last times I really went in and piled it on just to really see if I could feel it. With that, I could, but if you just go in with a sheer amount, I really don't notice that cooling sensation and either way it's worth it for me just because I love the longevity of this. So it does just come with a large chubby doe foot applicator. I don't like to go straight on from the doe foot applicator because I notice that it does hold a lot of product and a tiny bit of this goes a long way. So I always just like to dot it onto the back of my hand first and then either go in with a sponge, my fingers, or like just a really nice loose brush and lightly just stamp it onto the cheek. So that's kind of the oranginess that you see going on on my face right now. There are some really other pretty kind of muted mauve shades if you're not into these more like terracotta orange colors. I have this one pigment that I wanted to mention. This is the pigment that I have on my eyes right now. I ordered this, I think like three months ago, and it's just a product that I forgot to show on camera. I think I did use it on a like get ready with me on IG stories though. This is from the brand JD Glow Cosmetics. I have two of their pressed eyeshadows as well. I really wanna get some more. If you love like high intensity metallic reflective eyeshadows, these pressed shadows are amazing. But I've been really gravitating towards this pigment lately. This is one of their HD crystals. I know there's several different, I think there's actual like pigment pigments and then there's more of these like loose glittery pigments, but this one is in the shade exclusive. So it's just this really pretty kind of opalescent, rosy pink with just like, whenever you really get up close, you can see like flecks of both gold and silver glitter in natural light. It is absolutely, well, even in like this type of lighting, but in natural lighting, whenever the sun hits, you can really see just like every individual sparkle. It's so beautiful. I don't think I will ever be someone who just like gets over glittery eyeshadows. If you guys haven't checked out this line before, I would highly recommend. Definitely check out her Instagram. She recently came out with these like liquid, I think it's like liquid crystals, liquid eyeshadow that you could use as like eyeshadows, eyeliners. They sold out pretty much immediately, which I was really bummed about because I really wanted to try them. Moving on to the products that I have on my nails. I posted a vlog semi recently, which <laughs> now I'm kind of embarrassed that I incorporated the nail portion in there just because I feel like I've definitely improved since then. It's just something that takes practice. But both of these are from the brand Revel Nail. So kind of as like my base, I went in with the shade Margot. This is just a really pretty soft baby pink with teeny tiny like flecks of shimmer in it. But I wanted something with a little bit more of a chunky glitter. If you have like really thin flimsy nails, even whenever I go in with like treatments, I've just always had thinner nails. So I love the dip powder just because I feel like it gives my chance or gives my nails an actual chance to grow and not look like chicken McNubbin nails. And I don't know, I just really like how long that this lasts. So the base shade that I have on my nails is Margot. And then just to go in and add, my cuticles are so dry right now, to add a little bit more of like a chunky glitter, but it doesn't feel chunky to the touch like once you go in and buff, but it just adds this really nice sparkle. I went in with a shade Rose Quartz. So just one dip of this. I am really interested though in trying some other liquids for the whole dip system. I've heard that Revel Nail Powder dip powders are great. I 
I mean, I like them, but they're the only ones that I've tried so far. But I've heard from many people that there's liquids from better brands. So if you're somebody who does do dip nails at home and you have a liquid that you love, definitely let me know down below because I am curious in trying out other liquids. Okay, and then finally, I just have two skincare products here. This is one that I've actually used for years, but then I kind of stopped for a while. My mom had started using Rock. Is it ROC or Rock? I think it's Rock. Um, just their normal night cream, which she's the person who turned me on to that. She still uses it consistently and her skin looks absolutely amazing. But she always buys the kits from Sam's Club. I think it comes with like one of these tubs and then either like a day cream and a night cream or two night creams and this one, it's the retinol night creams. They're really great. I'd mentioned a while ago that something really like irritated the pores on the sides of my nose. Mm -hmm. Honeymoon Glow from pharmacy did a great job, but sometimes I can't use that every single day. It's something that I like to use maybe like every two days, but these are gentle enough to use every single day. And I feel like Honeymoon Glow mixed with these resurfacing pads definitely help to just get rid of all that weird texture on the sides of my nose. So in here you get 28 of these self foaming discs. After I wash my face just with like cleansing oil and then a mild cleanser, I'll go in with one of these. So as you can see on this side, there's just these tiny, I don't know, there you go. Um, they don't feel like rough polishing beads, but there's just a little bit of a beady texture in there that kind of just like melts down. I don't know if it's just like thicker pieces of like cleanser or whatever else is in there. I use these more just as my final cleanse rather than like getting my makeup off. However, it does do a great job of getting off any like remaining makeup. I've talked about this every single time, but anytime that I do go in with a cleansing oil and then of course like my cleanser, sometimes I will still notice that I miss just a tiny bit of makeup right here at the fronts of my ears. So that's a great opportunity just to really get in. I like to go in behind my ears, my neck, everything with these pads. They just really help with the texture. It says it's supposed to help with fine lines and wrinkles. I mean, I don't know, but I really do like the way that my skin feels fresh and clean afterwards. Okay, and then the very final product that I have here, this is something that I've been wanting to try for such a long time, but I was kind of back and forth on just because I heard that it was really, really thick. But as I mentioned earlier, I did get sunburned while I was in Florida and my forehead, it was like right along my hairline. It was peeling, it was so itchy. My forehead felt so tight and dry. No matter what I went in with, I just like wasn't getting the relief. So I really wanted to try something that was super rich and thick. Now I know that they make a light version as well and I think there may actually be a formula that's designed specifically for your face, but I wanted to go in with a heavy duty big daddy anyways. So this is the Walita Skin Food Original Ultra Rich Cream. If you got crusty heels, this, will be a lifesaver. Even, I should be using this on my cuticles now that I think about this. The only thing is, it is a very thick cream. This is another reason why my face looks very shiny and glossy right now. It definitely leaves behind like this kind of tacky and slightly oily finish. So just to give you guys an idea, it's a heavier cream. Like you really have to go in there and rub it in. It does kind of have like I would almost say like the sap from a pine tree mixed with kind of like an herbal scent, but it is so, so hydrating. If you're someone who really suffers from extra dry skin, especially around like the sides of your nose, this stuff works wonders. So do you see what I mean? It just leaves behind this kind of like oily finish. Now, if you have really oily skin anyways, and you have a hard time keeping foundation on, I wouldn't recommend this for your face. But if you are more on the normal to dry side, I've been using this and I haven't had any issues with like clogged pores or anything. I use this after that whole texture issue, by the way, just because I know somebody else will be like, oh, well, that's probably why you had those clogged pores. No, I've been using this for two and a half, I think almost three weeks now, and I haven't had any issues with clogged pores. I use it on my heels, use it on my face, use it on my weenus. It's working and I like it. I'm annoyed that I took so long to try it. I know they have a body butter as well. It is a little bit pricey for this size. I think this was like 16 or $17, but I, I really, really like it. And a little bit goes a long way. All right, y'all, so there you have it. There are all of my favorites from the month of May. I would love to hear about some of your go-to products from last month or whatever products you're currently loving now. I always love to interact with you guys in the comments down below. And that's pretty much it. As always, thank you so much for spending part of your day with me and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.